Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Friday, March 6, 2020. Join us for the next 45 minutes as we deliver today's top stories around the globe. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and live via streaming worldwide through UN TV News and Rescue Facebook account and UNTVWeb.com. I am Harleen Delgado sitting in for William Theo. And here are the headlines. The World Health Organization warns some countries are not taking coronavirus seriously. This is not a drill. This is not the time to give up. This is a time for pulling out all the stops. The Philippines records its first local case of COVID-19. PNP spokesperson Police Brigadier General Bernard Banak recounts his nearly fatal chopper crash experience. All I was uh, thinking of uh, was to get out. The PNP considers at least three angles in the helicopter crash that injured its top official and seven others. More Filipinos satisfied with the Duterte administration based on the fourth quarter SWS survey. And American Daredevil walks tightrope across an active volcano in Nicaragua. The Director General of the World Health Organization was warned governments that the continued international spread of the novel coronavirus is not a drill and will require significant action if public health authorities are to contain the deadly outbreak. The health organization urged people not to give up fighting the virus, which has now killed more than 3,000 globally and infected more than nearly 100,000. Kath Dumaraos reports why. The World Health Organization on Thursday called on all nations to pull out all the stops to fight the COVID-19 coronavirus as it continues to spread outside of China. The call to action comes as the global number of people infected by the virus nears 100,000, a green milestone that now appears inevitable with self-sustaining clusters continuing to expand in South Korea, Japan, parts of Europe, Iran, and the United States. WHO Chief Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus said Thursday that although public health authorities across the globe have the ability to successfully combat the spread of the virus, the organization is concerned that in some countries, the level of political commitment does not match the threat level. We are concerned that some countries have either not taken this seriously enough or have decided there is nothing they can do. This is not a drill. This is not the time to give up. This is not a time of for excuses. This is a time for pulling out all the stops. The virus has spread to more than 80 countries and territories since it was first identified in the Chinese city of Wuhan in December last year. Health experts have suggested that newly emergent clusters in Europe and the Middle East could accelerate the global spread of the disease. India has so far identified 30 cases, the majority of which have been linked to travelers from Italy, leading to fears that the world's second most populous country could see its own outbreak in the coming days. Cases linked to Iran have also emerged elsewhere in the world. Tedro said Wednesday that all governments should be preparing for sustained community transmission. This epidemic can be pushed back but only with a collective, coordinated, and compre comprehensive approach that engages the entire machinery of government. We're calling on every country to act with speed, scale, and clear-minded determination. That number is UNTV News and Rescue. The number of COVID-19 cases in the Philippines goes further up today. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization considers the fifth case in the country as a case of local transmission. Ayoko Miguel explains why. 
The health department confirms that the two new confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the Philippines are both Filipinos. The fourth confirmed case is a 48-year-old male with travel history to Japan. He returned to the Philippines last February 25 and experienced chills and fever beginning March 3. He is currently admitted in the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine or RITM in a stable condition. The fifth confirmed case, on the other hand, is a 62-year-old male from San Juan City with known hypertension and diabetes mellitus. He experienced cough with phlegm last February 25. On March 1, he sought medical consultation at the hospital in Metro Manila and was admitted due to severe pneumonia. He has no known history of travel outside of the country. He is known to have regularly visited a Muslim prayer hall in Barangay Green Hill, San Juan City. According to Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, the fifth case is considered a local case but has not infected others. Duque explains it is not a case of local transmission. There is no transmission to speak of as of yet because we only have one. Then that's why we're doing contact tracing. So to establish whether or not there are other cases or clustering of cases. But now it's uh, premature to say that there is a local transmission. But according to WHO country representative Dr. Rabindra Abiyasingha, because the patient has no travel history in other countries, it is a case of local transmission. Dr. Rabi clarifies, however, there's no community transmission yet in the country because COVID-19 scope is not at a community spread level. At this point of time, we are not sure whether we are looking at an isolated case or we are looking at a cluster of cases. A relative of the 15 case is also admitted in a hospital after being seen with COVID-19 symptoms. Meanwhile, three foreign nationals who had travel history in the Philippines tested positive for COVID-19 when they returned to their country. One of them is a 38-year-old male Taiwanese who visited the Philippines from February 28 to March 3. The other one is a 44-year-old Japanese who stayed in three different hotels in Manila from February 21 to February 28. It becomes very difficult to localize and say just because the person was in Philippines that he got infected in the Philippines. We need to recognize that he spent several days in Cambodia, several days in Vietnam. He traveled through Thailand, spent some time, and he has been going in and out of Japan also. So the infection could have actually happened in any one of these countries. The third is a female who came from Australia. She attended a wedding in Manila last February 13 and a reunion in Pangasinan. She returned to Australia on March 2. But according to WHO, they cannot yet conclude the three foreign nationals got infected here in the Philippines. The DOH still cannot declare a code red alert in the country because the source of the infection of the fifth case is still unidentified. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. San Juan City Mayor Francis Zamora has ordered the temporary closure of a Muslim prayer hall regularly visited by a patient who tested positive for the coronavirus disease 2019 or COVID-19. Tamora, in a statement on Friday, said he directed he has directed the city's health office to immediately disinfect, sanitize, and close to the public temporarily the prayer room in Barangay Green Hills. The order was made just moments after the Department of Health confirmed that a 62-year-old Filipino who previously frequented the place has tested positive for the COVID-19. He is among the two new cases of coronavirus in the country. The man has no history of travel outside the Philippines, making him the country's first local case. Samora said local authorities are working closely with the DOH, which has been doing contact tracing to identify the people who had been in contact with the coronavirus patient. Malacanang believes Congress will immediately approve the 2 billion peso supplemental budget for the Department of Health to combat coronavirus disease 2019. Rosalie Cos reports why. There's no need for President Rodrigo Duterte to remind the Congress for the approval of the 2 billion peso supplemental budget for the Department of Health to fight the spread of coronavirus disease 2019 in the country. According to the Palace, the Duterte administration believes lawmakers know what they must do. 
Reports say the rukus in the House leadership, including the change of chairmanship in the House Committee on Appropriations, delayed the approval of the Health Department's supplemental budget. Members of Congress know there is an emergency and they know their job. So I think they will do what they're supposed to do without even prodding from the president. Despite new positive COVID-19 cases in the country, Malacanang says the public has nothing to worry amid the health scare. There is no need for alarm or worry because we are ready. From the very start, we already said that. Meanwhile, the palace believes President Duterte has no plans to minimize his public engagements since he is workaholic. This despite reports of local transmission of COVID-19 in the country. The presidential security group is expected to intensify its protocol measures to protect not only the security but also the health of the president. Knowing the president who, who doesn't care less, who couldn't care less about his own safety from whether virus or any other harm, he will proceed the schedule unless there are other events that will change his movements. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. The Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Diseases has no plan yet to repatriate the Filipinos on the Grand Prince's cruise ship being held in quarantine in California, USA. Dante Amento will tell us why. The Philippine government has no plan yet to repatriate the more than 500 Filipino crew members on the MV Grand Princess cruise ship in San Francisco, California. They are among the thousands of passengers being held in quarantine due to COVID-19. The Philippines Health Department says even the possible quarantine facility has yet to be identified. Just recently, the local officials of Kapa Starlak have asked the government not to bring another batch of repatriates to their place, particularly in New Clark City. As of today, wala pa tayong nakikita o nare-receive na, na instruction or information about how, how we are going to handle our uh, compatriots, uh, obviously Filipino workers, in that liner. The World Health Organization also says it is still waiting for the latest information on the Filipino workers' situation through the interagency task force headed by the Department of Foreign Affairs. We haven't the information on what's happening on the cruise ship. We have heard reports of a few cases there, but beyond that we don't have the information and nor has there been any official communication with the DOH or with WHO. In a tweet, the Princess Cruise Liner says it has identified groups of passengers and crews for testing before their arrival in California. Meanwhile, WHO believes it would be better not to quarantine the passengers and crew members on the ship like what happened in Japan. But it needs complete details of the situation for the creation of new protocols. The practice we've seen with the Diamond Princess, probably you shouldn't be recommending quarantining them on a ship, but we don't know the circumstances and the facilities. So without knowing details, I cannot comment. Meanwhile, Malacanang is confident with America's capability to contain the disease. America is containment. I think the protocols of the U.S. is top-notch. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue, City of Manila. An Australian newspaper has printed extra blank pages to be cut out and used as toilet paper after coronavirus panic buying sparked a shortage. There have been shortages of blue roll throughout the country as shoppers stock up on supplies with the number infected by COVID-19 rising to more than 50 with two deaths. Violent altercations over diminishing blue roll supplies have occurred at several supermarkets and last night a truck carrying toilet paper bursts into flames. The government has urged people not to stockpile it and Prime Minister Scott Morrison has even tried to calm consumers worries about the tissue. U.S. President Donald Trump is expected to sign an $8.3 billion measure to help tackle the coronavirus outbreak in the country. Meanwhile, Filipinos in Washington state worry for their well-beings as cases of the virus continues to rise. Sonic Cause details why. 
As the coronavirus outbreak spreads further across the United States, Filipinos in Washington are worried as the state records the most number of confirmed COVID-19 cases and is the first to report deaths in the country. The death toll from the virus in the U.S. has risen to 12, with the latest fatality recorded in King County, Washington. At least 57 new cases were confirmed, striking for the first time in Colorado, Maryland, Tennessee, Texas, and San Francisco. Filipinos here have been witnessing panic buying in grocery stores because of the COVID-19 threat. We've bought food and since we have a baby coming soon, we've stocked up on diapers and formula and make sure that we have enough water and food for the next, I don't know, at least month or two. Panic buying has also begun in California, Virginia, New York, and New Jersey, and even in the provinces of Alberta, Ontario, and Quebec in Canada. Water, canned foods, and sanitizing supplies like disinfectants and face masks are slowly going out of stock, although the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, says that face masks are not useful filters for the small particles when the user breathes in. Kakatakot talaga, pero hindi kailangan tayong matakot. Gawan, gagawin lang natin ang paraan, magtutulungan at saka lumalayo tayo sa mga mataong lugar. A decrease in visitors in Chinese establishments and restaurants, particularly in Chinatowns, in different states is also noticeable. U.S. Vice President Pence today visited Washington State telling workers at emergency operation centers that President Donald Trump will sign the coronavirus spending bill into law Friday. While the coronavirus has uh, spread in the Seattle area and new cases are detected around the country uh, every day, the good news is that the vast majority of all of those who have contracted the coronavirus are recovering and doing well. The truth is that the risk uh, of contracting the coronavirus to the average American remains low. A helicopter flew testing kits to a cruise liner idled off the coast of California and barred from docking in San Francisco after at least 35 people developed flu-like symptoms aboard the ship, which have been linked to two other confirmed cases of coronavirus. The CDC early on Thursday reported 149 confirmed and presumed U.S. cases. The number is presumed not to include the 57 new cases reported on Thursday. U.S. health officials say they expect to get enough privately manufactured coronavirus tests around 1 million to public laboratories this week with the capacity to test about 400,000 people. Sonicos, UNTV News and Rescue, Los Angeles, USA. Now let's get the latest tally of the coronavirus cases around the world. The viral outbreak that began in China has infected 98,387 people globally in 91 countries. Still, the overwhelming majority of cases of the infection are in mainland China, which has reported 80,555 cases and 3,042 deaths. South Korea is still second to the most confirmed cases outside China, with 6,284 cases and 40 fatalities. The death toll in the European hotspot of Italy is now 148, now the highest outside China and with 3,858 confirmed cases. In Iran, meanwhile, the confirmed cases has doubled to rise to 3,513 and 107 fatalities. Meanwhile, in the Philippines, 678 persons are under investigation or POIs for possible COVID-19. The number of admitted POIs at medical facilities rises to 41. Meanwhile, the number of discharged PUIs is at 634. The total number of confirmed cases in the country, meanwhile, rises to five. Welcome back to iNews. 
Polope National Police Chief Police General Archie Francisco Gamboa was discharged from St. Luke's Medical Center in Taguig City this afternoon, a day after figuring in a chopper crash in Laguna. Meanwhile, PNP spokesperson Brigadier General Bernard Banak recounts his near-fatal chopper crash experience. Leia Ilagan details why. PNP spokesperson Police Brigadier General Bernard Banak was taking a rest when we arrived in his room on the ninth floor of St. Luke's Medical Center, Global City. PNP Public Information Office personnel also visited him today. The PNP spokesperson recounted his experience as chopper crossed in San Pedro, Laguna yesterday morning. He said he traveled by land going to La Peral Compound in San Pedro. But after PNP Chief Police General Archie Gamboa inspected the Highway Patrol Group impounding area, he boarded the 8 seat Bell 429. The police official added they were all surprised when the chopper almost could not ascend. Well, the hover yung, yung uh, uh, helicopter and then nag zero visibility dahil uh, yung uh, cloud of dust ay uh, na envelope na yung, yung chopper. And then, dahil uh, wala namang visibility, walang reference point, uh, from there, nakaramdam na ako ng uh, something is uh, not right. Parang mm -hmm. nag-banking siya. And then, uh, so from there, nag-brace uh, position na ako. Uh -huh. uh, prepare for crash land. He felt the chopper drop and roll, but he did not notice what was happening to his comrades. All I was uh, thinking of uh, was to get out. Okay. And since kaya ko naman na uh, kwan, mm -hmm. uh, tumayo. So I uh, stood up, tumayo ako. Then paglabas ng yung ulo ko dun sa window, broken na na window, mm -hmm. uh, sinuot ko muna yung aking cap. Banak sustained abrasion on his right arm, left eye, and forehead. He also felt back pain because of compression in his spinal column. Inside the helicopter, he was seated on the last row right in the middle. On his left was Police Major General Jovic Ramos, and to his right was crew member Police Senior Master Sergeant Louis Estona. PNP Chief Gamboa was on the second row. On his left was Police Major General Mariel Magaway, and on his right was Aid Police Captain Kevin Gairamara. Well, uh, thank God, uh, naiigtas ako at uh, slowly recovering na. At uh, medyo masakit pa ang, uh, ang pagkakabugbog ng aking uh, likod. Pero uh, in time, ay uh, gagaling din ito. Banak also calls on Filipinos to pray for his comrades, especially Police Major General Ramos and Major General Magaway. Ramos remains unconscious until now. PNP Chief Gamboa and his aide, Police Captain Gairamara, were both discharged from hospital this afternoon. The PNP chief maintains he will go back to work on Monday. Earlier, Police Lieutenant General Guillermo Eliazar, the Deputy Chief for Operations and the head of the Special Investigation Task Group Bell 429, visited Chief PNP and the others injured. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue, Taguig City. The PNP Special Task Force investigating the Bell 429 chopper that crashed in Laguna yesterday revealed that the helicopter does not have a black box. Meanwhile, the group is considering at least three angles in the helicopter crash that injured its top official and seven others. Sherwin Kulabong details this report. PNP Deputy Chief for Operations Police Lieutenant General Guillermo El Yazar today visited the site where the ill-fated police chopper crashed in a residential area in San Pedro, Laguna. El Yazar leads the PNP Special Investigation Task Force created to look into the circumstances surrounding the two-year-old Bear 429 chopper crash incident which left PNP Chief Police General Archie Gamboa and seven others injured. Speaking to reporters, El Yazar said they are now collecting pieces of evidence, including including statements of witnesses, passengers, and first responders in investigating the incident. He also revealed that they have yet to find the chopper's flight radar and black box that might be used to shed light on what really happened prior to its crash. Well, well, meron kasi sinasabi, narin ko sa inyo sa meron uh, flight radar and black box, pero 
we have yet to find out. Pero according to the provincial director of uh, Laguna PPO, who happens to be a pilot himself, itong uh, Bell 429 is walang, uh, wala siyang uh, black box. Eliasar said they are considering at least three possible angles in the helicopter crash, pilot error, the chopper's condition, and the take-off site preparation. The PNP official added they will also look into the report on the crash submitted by local investigators. Initial investigation showed that the chopper got entangled with power lines shortly after leap off in San Pedro town. The take-off site was sandy and the aircraft's propellers fanned a thick dust which caused poor visibility. The chopper caught fire later on. Eliasar said the standard operating procedures in utilizing PNP air assets will also be reviewed to prevent any similar incidents in the future. Itong mga ating mga air assets, isipin mo, puro bago lahat yan. First time nagkaroon tayo ng ganyan. Salamat sa ating presidente. Pero nawawala ang peace of mind natin kung ganyan ang mangyari. Kaya kailangan, ma-review natin maigi yan. Pati na rin yung ating, uh, and based on the result of this uh, investigation, ma-review at ma-improve yung mga SOP sa, para bumalik yung ating tiwala ng ating mga senior officers and other members of the PNP that will uh, uh, utilize our air assets. He added they have tapped the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines to help in the investigation. The PNP has grounded its entire fleet of rotary wing aircraft. Sherwin Kulubong, UNTV News and Rescue, Laguna. From a point of view of a pilot, the PNP chopper that crashed yesterday could have been caused by a pilot's error. Ray Palayo explains why. Former Senator J.V. Ejercito felt sad over the incident of PNP belt chopper crash in Laguna yesterday. In a video call interview, the former senator said he pushed the allotment of budget for belt 429 choppers and other PNP air assets. This is vital for the operation of PNP because they will have eye in the sky. Ejercito was the vice chair of the Senate Committee on Finance when the new PNP assets were funded during the term of then PNP Chief Ronald Bato de la Rosa. Dito na actually, but uh, actually a necessity. I just can't imagine having a Philippine National Police na walang air asset. Kailangan kailangan talaga ito. As a pilot himself, Ejercito said the incident was possibly due to pilot error. The chopper shouldn't be forced to take off when there is thick dust in mid-air. helicopter kasi very is a visual flight flight rules na tinatawag no um VR so very dependent siya sa visuals no and so dapat yun hindi mo na pirilit no um inayaan mo na mag-set ng dust pero sa tingin ko dapat sana binasa muna para hindi ganun kagrabe yung yung pag yung uh, he explains that Bell Chopper 429 is very strong because it's a twin engine, but it cannot immediately take off vertically if it is full of passengers. Sa tingin ko, kahit na twin engine siya, dahil full capacity, kinakailangan may konting buwelo. Hindi kaya yung basta lift off. Pero kung halimbawa, ako lang sila, apat lang sila, yun kaya yung i- ano, kaya ng uh, power ng chopper ilipo. Meanwhile, an investigator said the chopper possibly fly backward. It is possibly that the pilot did not notice the electrical cable that has a height of 15 meters, resulting it to be hung. The distance of the chopper's crash site from where it took off is 56 meters. Ejercito says the landing and takeoff sites should be far from electrical cables. Sa tingin ko kasi yung may, may high tension wire eh, kung saan siya sumapit, na dapat talagang malayong pag may high tension wire. Ako, ang tinatawag na, na mga piloto dyan, kami mga nag-aaral eh, nakakakilit eh, dahil nakakatakot talaga yan. No? So, it's a no-no na magkaroon ng landing or take-off, especially take-off, na malapit sa high tension wire. The former senator said the PNP has four units of Airbus different from the model of that which crashed in Laguna. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Armed Forces of the Philippines is now validating a lawmaker's information that up to 3,000 Chinese military men are in the country for an immersion mission. Arlene Delgado explains why.
The country's armed forces is now looking into the alleged presence of Chinese military men in the country. This after Senator Ban Filalaksun claimed through a reliable source that 2,000 to 3,000 members of China's armed forces, the People's Liberation Army, are in the country for an immersion mission. The PLA is considered the world's largest military force. However, the senator clarifies the information is still unverified. According to AFP Chief of Staff Felimon Santos Jr., there are now in the process of validating the report being a matter of serious concern. He has also directed his intelligence staff to look into the matter while coordinating with concerned government agencies. The Department of the Interior and Local Government also said the Philippine National Police will investigate the report. One of the angles to be looked into is the shooting incident in Makati City in which two ID cards of People's Liberation Army were confiscated from the two suspects who were both Chinese nationals. The Makati City Police later on clarified the suspects are not the owners of the IDs. According to Senator Lakson, this report is a test and a challenge to the country's intelligence community. Earlier, Senator Richard Gordon said China may be using the pogo industry to spy in the country, noting the influx of Chinese nationals and suspicious buck of money entering the Philippines. On the video presented by Gordon during the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee hearing yesterday, a number of shuttle buses were seen inside the multi national village in Paranaque City offloading Chinese nationals. Some residents expressed fear with a growing number of Chinese nationals in their area, noting that a firing range has been constructed inside the subdivision. Data from the Bureau of Immigration show more than 200,000 Chinese nationals have entered the country for over two months just before the Philippines imposed a travel ban to and from mainland China. The palace, meanwhile, says it will wait for the validation of the AFP before making statements on the matter. Harleen Delgado, UN TV News and Rescue, Kalaokan City. Three drug suspects are now facing charges after a by-bust operation in Cavite on Thursday. Meanwhile, PDA Chief Aaron Aquino defends the Duterte administration's anti-illegal drug campaign. Astro Kadapan Jr. details why. Three suspects of illegal drug distribution were apprehended in Bacoor City, Cavite yesterday by Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency personnel in a by-bust operation. Ronnie Mardocchio Menodiado, alias Boy, with cohorts Victoria Vida Najera and Annie Rose Torres Lingua are allegedly the main sources of Shabu in Calabarzon region. Their illegal activities were divulged by another drug suspect arrested by Pidea on March 3. The suspects allegedly use a new modus operandi through which the main source of the Shabu leaves the contraband inside a buyer's empty car. Pidea sees a total of 15 kilograms of Shabu wrapped in Chinese tea packaging with a street value of 102 million pesos. The suspects refuse to give any statements. The suspects are detained in the Pidea headquarters in Quezon City. They will face charges of violation of Republic Act 9165 or the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002. With the unceasing apprehension of drug personalities, PIDEA Director General Aaron Aquino defends the current administration's anti-illegal drugs campaign after Vice President Lenny Robredo called it a failure. Aquino explains the daily report of successful operations against illegal drugs should be viewed as an optimistic measure of the government. This is why Aquino opposes Robredo's statement that the administration's drug war is a failure. Hindi lang pwedeng i-accept eh. Dahil hindi naman talaga acceptable na failure ang drug war. Kasi ka kami, we have the figures, we have, we have our accomplishments, we have the achievements we have done. Uh, we've been showing that to the media, to the people, na ito yung nagawa namin. Ito yung na nalinis namin. Ito yung naaresto namin. Ito yung operations na ginawa namin. Ito yung mga nakapista namin ng mga droga for the past two and a half years na comparing sa previous administration, walang katiting. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. More Filipinos are satisfied with the Duterte administration based on the fourth quarter survey of the Social Weather Stations or SWS. Rosalie Cos tells us why. 
From very good, the public's net satisfaction rating for the Duterte administration rises to excellent based on the latest survey of the Social Weather Stations or SWS. Compared to the 67% in September 2019, the administration scored additional 6 points in December 2019, bringing the public satisfaction rating to 73%. It means more Filipinos are satisfied with the president's performance. The Duterte government's rating improved on helping the poor, fighting terrorism, providing information needed by the citizens to properly examine what the government is doing having clear policies, developing a healthy economy, reconciling with Muslim rebels, and protecting the freedom of the press. The overall excellent rating of the Duterte administration is due to score improvements in Metro Manila, Mindanao, Balance Luzon, and Visayas. The survey was conducted from December 13 to 16, 2019 through face-to-face -face interviews of 1,200 respondents throughout the country. Malacanang welcomes the survey result. Excellent. That's my reaction. Which is consistent with how the people receive the president and this administration. It's been very transparent. It's been very decisive. He has only one thought in mind, provide a comfortable life for every citizen of this country and create an atmosphere of peace and progress for this country. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. Why News continue. If you are going to Intramuros and the Manila City Hall, and you need to use the Lagusnilad underpass, you might be surprised for what you will see and experience soon. Bernard Dadis tells us why. Passing through Lagusnilad underpass before was a daily struggle because vendors occupied most of its space. But since under the management of the current city government, the long-neglected path has undergone clearing operations, including the vendors. It also went viral in social media after the youth activist group vandalized one of its wall of their so-called art. And now, the Lagusnilad underpass renovation is nearly complete as one of Mayor Isco Moreno de Magoso's projects. Concrete bricks in every entrance and exit ways have been laid out. Concrete bricks also complements the interior design in each corner of the underpass. The layering of non-slip tiles in all stairways and floors is almost complete. Metal railings that will be used for vertical garden in every entrance and exits have been installed. Only the plants have yet to be placed. A sketch of a huge frame of wall painting or mural can be seen taking shape. These are all true collaborative efforts of the Manila City Government and the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. Talaga para sa taong bayan ito, kaya ginawa ito, kaya ito pinaganda. Para maramdaman ng taong bayan kung ano ang para sa kanila. Hindi katulad nung dati, parang pinagkaitan sila. Dahil dadaan ka rito noon, eh, hindi, halos, hindi, hindi ka halos makadaan. A wooden design cover the ceilings. According to foreman Eduardo Madrilejos, they will add lights to brighten the underpass. He also added that part of the surprise for pedestrians is a space dedicated for a mini library and an interactive area. Ganda kasi makakadaan na kami maayos. Sobrang ganda po. Mayoris ko, sobrang bangis mo po. Sana yung ibang ano din, yung ibang underpass din, maayos din. But it's getting better now. So keep up the good work lang. Lagusnilad underpass renovations is expected to be completed this month. Dito lalabas kasi yung anyo ng bayang, bayan, kung sino may ari ng bayan, Maynila, bayan ng Maynila. Dito lalabas ang tunay na ayo ng Manilinyo, kung gaano sila kaganda, kung gaano sila uh, mag-alaga ng uh, kapaligiran. Bernard Daddy's UNTV News and Rescue, Manila.
And for the news abroad, a British High Court judge found that Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid has subjected his own family to two decades of abuse and terror. Jovic Bermas details why. A British judge has ruled Dubai's ruler Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum ordered the abduction of two of his daughters and orchestrated a campaign of intimidation against his former wife. Judge Andrew McFarlane said he accepted as proved a series of allegations made by Mohammed's former wife, Princess Haya bin Al Hussein, 45, half sister of Jordan's King Abdullah, during a custody battle over their two children at London's High Court. Haya fled to London on April 15th last year with the children Dalila, 12, and Zayed, 8, fearing for her safety amid suspicions that she had had an affair with one of her British bodyguards. McFarlane said he accepted her claim that Mohammed arranged for his daughter Shamsa, then aged 18, to be kidnapped off the streets of Cambridge in central England in 2000 and had her flown back to Dubai. He also ruled it was proved that the Sheikh had arranged for Shamsa's younger sister Latifa to be snatched from a boat in international waters off India by Indian forces in 2018 and returned to the Emirate in what was her second failed escape attempt. Both remained there deprived of their liberty, McFarlane said. In the judgments published on Thursday, McFarlane accepted that the Sheikh subjected Hayat to a campaign of intimidation which made her fear for her life. In a statement issued after the judgments were published, Sheikh Mohammed said, As a head of government, I was not able to participate in the court's fact-finding process. This has resulted in the release of a fact-finding judgment, which inevitably only tells one side of the story. He insisted the case was a private matter. Jovic Burma, CUNTV News and Rescue. Turkey and Russia agreed on a ceasefire deal in Syria's Idlib region, their two leaders said, after talks in Moscow to contain a conflict which has displaced nearly a million people in three months. Meanwhile, Elizabeth Warren, the liberal firebrand who emerged as a top Democratic contender for the White House, ended her campaign. Beverly Saison will tell us why. In Syria, after more than six hours of talks in Moscow, Russian President Vladimir Putin and Turkish counterpart Recep Tayyip Erdogan agreed on the ceasefire from midnight on Friday. The agreement will also create a security corridor along the key M4 highway in northern Syria, where Turkish and Russian forces will launch joint patrols from March 15. The deal aims to put a stop to intense fighting in Idlib, the northwestern province of Syria where Ankara is battling Moscow-backed government forces. Nearly a million civilians have fled their homes due to the violence and dozens of Turkish soldiers have been killed. In the USA, Senator Elizabeth Warren has ended her presidential campaign following disappointing Super Tuesday results. A favorite of the liberal left, the Massachusetts Senator 70 was once a frontrunner in the Democratic field. Warren said she needed some time to decide on another candidate to support. I guarantee I will stay in the fight for the hardworking folks across this country who've gotten the short end of the stick over and over. That's been the fight of my life, and it will continue to be so. The Democratic contest to take on President Donald Trump in November is now seen as a two-horse race between former Vice President Joe Biden, 77, and Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, 78. In the United Kingdom... Britain's Prince Harry and his wife Meghan appeared together at an official engagement on Thursday for the first time since January's announcement that they would step away from their royal duties. The appearance by the Duke and Duchess of Sussex as Queen Elizabeth's grandson and Meghan are officially known at an awards ceremony for wounded service personnel will also be one of their last before they quit as working members of the royal family. The couple stop the royal duties at the end of the month as they seek to carve out a progressive new role, mainly based in North America, which they aim to finance themselves. While Harry remains a prince, they have agreed not to use the his or her royal highness titles and will not use royal in their branding, even though they said there was no jurisdiction by the monarchy or the government to stop them using the word overseas. The couple have spent most of their time in Canada since January's shock announcement. 
Beverly Saison, UNTV News and Rescue. NASA has assigned a name for its new rover that will be sent to Mars this July and is expected to arrive on the Red Planet in February 2021. Inya Armilio reports. And the name of this mission is... Perseverance. The new rover NASA will send to Mars this summer. The name was chosen in a nationwide contest that involved over 28,000 student essays from kindergarten to grade 12. Lake Braddock High School 7th grader Alex Mather read his winning essay on stage. Curiosity, insight, spirit, opportunity. If you think about it, all of these names of past Mars rovers are qualities we possess as humans. We are always curious and seek opportunity. We have the spirit and insight to explore the moon, Mars, and beyond. But if rovers are to be the qualities of us as a race, we miss the most important thing. Perseverance. Perseverance is scheduled to launch along with a helicopter aboard the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station not earlier than 9 a.m. on July 17. It will travel through interplanetary space for seven months and is scheduled to land at the Durazzo Crater on February 18, 2021. If successful, it will be NASA's eighth Mars landing and the fifth Mars rover. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. It is a common knowledge that we need to drink 8 to 10 glasses of water every day. But did you know that there is a formula for you to know what really is the right amount of water you must consume in a day? And how can you solve the problem of being forgetful when it comes to drinking water? Nina Armilla reports. How many glasses or liters of water do you drink every day? Anim na basa ang nainom ko. Say five or four anala. Wapat. Why are you not able to drink enough water in a day? Mahina po ako sa tubig. Kakalimutan ko po eh. Many people tend to forget to drink water, be it in the workplace, in the school, or at home. Did you know that there is mathematics when it comes to the ideal water intake of a person depending on one's body weight? That is, the amount of water a 200-pound male should drink in a day differs from that which a 100-pound female must consume. According to Dr. Dean Harley, Doctor of Natural Medicine, Acupuncture, and Herbal Medicine, the formula to know the ample amount of water one must drink in 24 hours is your weight in pounds divided by 30 equals liters of water. For example, Ariel who weighs about 45 kilograms or 99.208 pounds. 99.208 pounds divided by 30 equals 3.3 liters. The ideal water intake for Ariel is 3.3 liters. Conrad, on the other hand, who weighs about 200 pounds, must drink more than 6 liters of water in a day based on his weight. And to remind oneself to drink water, different tricks could be done. Use an alarm clock. Label a time of the day, drink water now. When the alarm goes off, drink a glass of water right away and adjust the time and drink again when you hear the alarm again. You could also place liters of water right at your workstation. You won't forget to drink water that way. Every after going on a CR break, drink a glass of water. Or, you could also join the Chatsos Bonfire Grupong Nagpapaalalang Uminom Ka ng Tubig. It is a bonfire on Chatsos in which group members remind one another to drink water from time to time. Just download the Chatsos mobile app on Google Play Store or an App Store to join the bonfire. Experts say drink water not only when you feel thirsty. 
Drinking water and keeping the body hydrated helps maintain blood pressure, helps in weight loss, prevents kidney damage, regulates body temperature, and water delivers oxygen throughout the body. Remember, health is wealth. To be able to continue doing good to others, take care of your health. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news. I am Harleen Delgado. And I am Angelo Castro III, because we need to know. We will always ask why. Good evening.